Well, welcome back here to Fillette Field. We will have the national anthem of Guam first as the home team. Players now just filtering out, getting ready here for semi-final number two, Guam versus New Zealand. Expecting this to be an absolute thriller of a game. These two played a tight match in the pool play. It was Guam that went through undefeated in pool play. They're the number one seed, New Zealand the number four Players, seed. Please remove your caps. Of course, that counts for nothing. Semi-final, it's all on the line. National anthem of Guam. course will remain standing national anthem of the host country New Zealand Thank you. We will now have the plate meeting. The teams will come together and then New Zealand will perform the haka. Co commentator for this game, Mike Kovic, back with us again. Back again, guys. As we see the teams coming together, this customary greetings of the teams. Normally there'd be a sharing of gifts. Of course, these teams have already played, so that has already been conducted. We'll get ourselves ready here challenge to be laid down by this New Zealand team, the haka. Mike, you must be looking forward to this. Oh, I'm certainly looking forward to this. Uh, it's uh, something that always gives me that little uh, tingle up the spine. It's a beautiful tradition of our country here and um, it's just a great, great start to a game. It brings the fire from the beginning. So we do have a limited production team here again today, so we're going to struggle to get ourselves a good shot of this hacker but we see the New Zealand team clustering together Guam as is customary they will face this challenge head on great spirit between these two teams Guam competing in Little League many years a lot of these players also in the 15 and under WBSC team they understand the cultural significance of this challenge. See there, the plate meeting finishing up. 
lot of respect here between the managers and the umpires. It'll be cagey behind them, behind the, the plate. We don't have the program, of course. We don't know who the head umpire is of this four-man crew, but cagey will be controlling things. I think both teams here are going to be wanting to come out strong straight from the start and um, lay the law down. You see Guam there lined up. first New Zealand team this is customary it's part of the respect they will be waiting until Guam step away from this we have a showdown today this gives us an indication here they're ready to go can cut the tension with a knife here for left field Team will hold. This is a challenge here. See the Guam manager getting his team together now. The challenge is set here. Oh boy. That's an indication of they're not backing down. I don't know about you, Mike, but chills down the spine with that. A hundred percent. Blues had to come into play there. It's the first time I've seen that of the tournament with uh, the Haka there, Roy. Sickle arm team, still clustered together. What we have seen is this Guam team lay down their own challenge. I love seeing that. There we go, the passion of all the players there. It's intense. We are ready to go here. Semi-final number two, Guam versus New Zealand. Number one seed Guam, number four seed New Zealand. Of course, that means nothing now. Whoever wins this game will go on to meet Korea in the final. These two teams just two games away from booking themselves a place at the World Series, Senior League World Series. They'd get to represent. Asia Pacific and Middle East region. And these two teams actually represent the last two teams to represent our region at the World Series. Of course, 
New Zealand going there in 2023, Guam going there in 2022. The two years prior to that, of course, COVID affected. Number three on the mound for Guam is uh, Mike Kovic. Just scrambling a little in the box. We don't have our usual production crew with us. They're all at home resting for the final. It'll be a big day tomorrow. I will be here if uh, Samuel Super Samuel doesn't show again. Samuel Lever, the man, the myth, the legend. Greatest play-by-play -play caller New Zealand baseball. You know, uh, you, you pulled out your paper there, but you're not giving me an update. Okay, we have, what was he number? Number three, so it looks like Patrick Alvarez. Patrick Alvarez on the mound for Guam to start off. Our first batter in the box today, Corbin McKinley. Corbin's filled in this leadoff spot. Regularly been the shortstop of the New Zealand team. And he and takes a rip at the three. first one. And we have one out to start. Guam will be very happy with that. Not traditional for a leadoff batter to just take a hack at the first pitch. Didn't really uh, give the captain of the New Zealand team, number two hitter, 34, Liam Hay. Didn't really give him much to see, didn't get much of a read on the pitcher. Now, Liam's been pretty, hitting pretty well over the tournament. Um, we've got a better wind factor today with balls being held up a little bit in that wind. Holds for a ball. You see Liam there in the box. Powerful batter. That'll be ball two off the bat for Liam Hay. A shot here of Alvarez on the mound. Liam, big, big cut. There. I did hear rumours that. Liam is one of the players in this New Zealand team that's backing himself as having a chance at the baseball burger. That's two and two. You can see straight away uh, the New Zealand team here wanting to uh, make contact and get that ball in play. Very aggressive in the box. We like to see that. Liam Hay hustling down the line. And that'll be two down. Played out to second baseman. Easy play at one for well, the second out. You say an easy play, but with Liam Wheels Hay, you really do have to be on your game. We see this. We have TJ Amosa. Big unit, TJ Amosa. He's been hitting very well in uh, his outings uh, over this tournament so far. That drops in there for a strike. You see Alvarez just throwing strikes. We're very happy with the start so far. Just missing there. Count goes to one and one. So he's on a 4-4-4 average for the tournament so far. TJ. And he hits it down past three. He's going to be safe on one. Great bit of hitting, TJ Amosa. 79 exit velocity on that. We have number 44, Messiah Tuhoro, up to bat next. Two down, runner on one. They talk a lot about runners in scoring position, but when Messiah's up at the plate, any runners in scoring position, this guy. He won the home run home run derby at the recent senior league championships. Ball outside. Alvarez just working at just a low 60, 61 mile an hour that last pitch, just to give you a bit of an indication at home. Be interesting to see if New Zealand coach puts TJ Mosa in motion, whether that be a hit and run or a straight steal, a little pick off attempt here, but very small lead over there. Hey, you saw, hey, you saw. 
One ball on the side so far. And he hits it down the middle for a. That'll be three down. Oh my. I think. Um, umpire Paul Vodonovic here. That was a close play. Coach Tidia Thompson, not at all happy about that. I'm, uh, I'm liking the emotion. Yeah, he might want to be a little careful. He will want to be careful. We don't want to see this. We don't want to see uh, comments directed at the umpires. They're out there doing their best. It'll be up to you at home to, to judge. Personally, I had that safe at first. I'm not sure about you, Mike. I... What I saw, I, I, I would probably down, be going down the track with Tyria there. Um, I, felt, I felt that one was safe there. So, as we... Unfortunately, uh, it's not myself or you, Roy, that uh, get to make that decision. So we have to stand by what uh, the umpire there has said. Quite frankly, I'm glad it's not up to us to make the decision. It's a tough job out there, Mike, and we thank all of the volunteers, including the umpires. It's Absolutely. a tough job. Yep, they're all here without, um, you know, just putting it out there for the kids and making it all happen for, for all the baseballers that we have here. Um, it's a selfless job. So we see here, Peter Yee on the mound, this young star out of the Central City Baseball Club. Of course, they play out of War Memorial Park and Mount Roskill. And uh, Peter Yee's had a, a, in his regular season, he's had a, quite a quite a good season there, old uh, Peter, there, Roy. Absolutely. In fact, not just playing in the senior league division, he's also played up into a division that doesn't exist in Little League anymore. It used to be called Big League, 19 and under. <laughs> I was actually at this very field, Follett Field, where I watched Peter Yee throw six shutout innings. And there was against, a great out in by Peter Against there. the home club, HP Hawks. Peter just shut them down. So we'll be looking at um, Peter getting us going today. And everyone in the, the field here Looking relatively confident. We just have to they have to play their game and stay composed and do their jobs. Absolutely. Well, low pitch one in there for Weekly, who's been uh, outstanding on in the batter's box uh, this week uh, week of the tournament. Absolutely. Whether or not you called that safe or whether or not you called that out at first once again it was shortstop weekly making a nice play did bobble it a little it'll be two balls to start off for peter peter yee just looking at that curveball he does throw a lot of off-speed pitches just 53 mile an hour that curveball two balls on weekly right now there's a strike right there from peter bringing it back and that's important for Peter, just to just establish that fastball, 65 mile an hour. Just he is a pitcher; he's not afraid to pitch batters backwards, start them off off speed. But but a fastball is an important pitch. There he goes. Centre field chip there by Weekly and held it one. But he's nonetheless on bag for Guam. First yep. batter up. Peter going back to back with the fastballs on weekly was all over that one. Just rips a liner to centre field. We have three, number three, Alvarez up to bat. Left handed batter batting number two in the lineup today. Weekly, he's got a lot of speed over there on first. Peter looking at the pick off move. Interesting to see here what sort of a, a lead weekly tries to take on the left-hander. Two balls and a strike on Alvarez at the moment. Another pick attempt. 
Just keeping him knowing that they know he's there, not getting out too far, too much of a good good hop. A lot of pressure on Alvarez today, obviously the starting pitcher for Guam, also number two batter. He's got an opportunity to do some damage straight away. Good Lays down the down bun. Here. Safe at one, and he's going for three. And safe at three and one. Alvarez having a look, he's not going to go though. Wow. Punts for a hit there. Nicely placed little bunt down there too, in between third and pitcher. We've seen this a lot, players putting down bunts. Yes, they're looking to move the runner over, but they're bunting for hits as well, and that was definitely the case there for Alvarez. Even Acosta up in the batter's box now. Even Acosta, of course, we saw him rip a few in the game yesterday. As Guam knocked over the powerhouse of Korea to take this number one seed. One. Runner goes. And there's going to be no opportunity there for catcher Shane Scanlon. So if we go around the diamond here, look at the New Zealand defence. We've got Nico Waru over there at third base. We've got Corbin McKinley. He's been an institution there at shortstop. Uh, for this game today, we've got Ben Bongiovanni playing second. And of course, Liam Hay at first base. Shane Scanlon behind the dish. Forming that battery with Peter Yee. That pitch just up. And looking at the outfield, bit of a change here. Hugo Harvey has been playing a lot of second base. Of course, did a lot of pitching yesterday. They've put him out in left field. We've seen just a few uncharacteristic errors from this New Zealand team. Hopefully Hugo can tidy that up. We have Peter, a strike there. Straight down the middle. TJ Mosa. Looked safe at centre field yesterday, and it looks like Micah Hargrave back in right field. So I'd be guessing this New Zealand team will be using a DH, as that's another nice strike. Acosta fouls it off. We have a full count up now for Peter, and the batter will be looking at protecting that plate right now. He's got runners, two runners scoring positions here, second and third. They'll be wanting to bring those guys in. It's lifted to left centre, and that'll be a safe hit. And we have one runner in here for Guam off a safe outfield hit there. A surprise there, the coach holding the runner, but I guess with, uh, with no one out at this stage, coach believes that there will be more opportunities for that runner to come home. Wow. Up to the plate, we have uh, Ty Leon Guerrero. Guam taking an early lead as catcher Shane Scanlon steps out. First and third call. <laughs> nice pitch there by Peter. Fouled off behind. Home plate. Peter under pressure in the first innings, and this is not what the New Zealand team would have wanted. Runner in motion. Never see runners now, second and third. Pressure right on here. Guerrero batting a 4.44 for the tournament so far. Good one and one. The ball high there, so we have two balls and a strike now. 4.44 batting average might uh, explain why he's in the cleanup spot. And we have another piece out to right field. Hargraves has picked it up and getting it back in for the cut. We have another runner in here. That'll be 2-0 to Guam so far. 
This is not the start this New Zealand team wanted. Again, we were talking about it yesterday, Roy. The energy in the Guam dugout seems very electric. They have, they have a very confidence around them at the minute. Indeed, I. This New Zealand team must be looking on, going, "What do we do here? This is a semi-final. Do or die." Ray Sean Parks in the batter's box, left hand batter, number 22. He's got a runner on three and one. Peter comes to the plate and that'll see another runner advance. And things just not really working here for the New Zealand team. Yet to record an out here in the bottom of the first. And they will be wanting those outs to come very quickly there, Roy. Absolutely, we need some we need some energy, we need some action, we need some excitement from this New Zealand team to lift this large home crowd. Again, these boys from Grand Blue really crowding that plate at the moment, almost to say that they're inside. Yeah. Well, it is interesting, when he swings the bat, I do believe his toe is going over that line. He's giving KG a chance to actually make a call that well it would be controversial I think it would be correct yeah batter out of the box see inches that toe forward even further I would go as far to say that it's inside the box already on that before the pitch there Roy or outside sorry the box inside outside I know what you mean yeah Runners on one and two, zero down. Parks in the box. He's got one ball, one strike. And we ripped that tonight. one. Center fielder tracking there. over. He'll make the catch. No opportunity to throw out the runner. That'll be a sacrifice fly. That is three nil to Guam. As we stand. Guam will be relieved though. Sorry, New Zealand, I'm, I, I'm sorry, New Zealand will be relieved. Get the first out. Maybe build a little bit of confidence. Peter Yee, not a lot had broken his way early. Throws a nice strike there. Javier Taimanglo in, on the, in the batter's box now. idea. I'm Anglo holding that beautiful De Marini bat. We get a strike there from Peter Yee. Strike there, just one out still. Two balls and one strike here. They're going to be really wanting this this out now, Roy. They need to get one so they get a get a feel for uh, taking taking the outs and carrying this game on and getting out of this innings. Oh, great pitch from Peter! We have the first out. And we're just in the dirt, which gives the 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 batter an opportunity to try to run to first. But Shane Scanlon was all over that, and that's the second out. I think I see our uh, production staff just entering, slowly turning up, entering Lloyd Ousmore Park here for left field. We've got Trace Taser on in the batter's box right now. Of course when I say production staff I'm talking about Patricia Antonovich, so she's been at Home setting things up for her daughter's 21st, Taylor Antonovich, April Fool's baby. We have a hit here. And it pops up, Liam, Liam Hay, Hay underneath it. it. No. Dropped it. And another run comes in, making it four. 
mil to Guam. Oh, I'm surprised to see that Liam Hay, really solid glove. Looked like he was under it, looked like he had it under control. And as you say, 4 0 here in the bottom of the first, and this is not what New Zealand wanted. Looking around the crowd, I see a few people shaking their heads. Darren Gumatautau in the box now. A 200 average for the tournament. Peter again, the pickoff attempt. That runner doesn't have much of a lead, but Peter just making sure it stays that way. Having two down now, they're gonna really wanna get this batter and come in and see if they can get these bats working. The early lead for Guam here. And a strike. So you see there the effect of those pickoffs from Peter as he lifted his leg. The runner on first thought he was going to one again. Returned to the base, but Peter was throwing a pitch. Great pitch there. Pitch there. Coming in high and dropping right in the zone there. Yeah, there, Connor Perry, New Zealand pitching coach. Calling out your way ahead, Peter. Obviously referring to the fact that he's got a couple strikes on this batter. Runner goes. Really disappointing there from the New Zealand team and sort of showing that they're not in the game. I didn't hear any calls alerting the catcher that the runner had gone. I'm surprised that um, we did talk about this um, with other teams as well yesterday. Um, communication on the diamond. It's a, it's a big, it's, it's essential there, Roy, isn't it? Well, I think I saw Coach TP over there shaking his head. He's hot on that. Communication to the catcher gives his catcher a chance. There was no shot there as Shane was focused on looking to frame the pitch, not realising the runner had gone. Big lead here on second. Runner goes. Pops it up. Pops it up under Liam. Liam won't make a mistake this here time. There we go. Side away. So New Zealand's going to be wanting to look at really getting some runs back here because uh, a lead going into the first at bat for them. We will really they will to get some runs on the board. Just make a little adjustment here. I did notice that. We're struggling slightly with the uh, bandwidth, so just lowering the quality of these cameras to make sure that we don't get choppy footage. So, apologise if it has been a little bit choppy here in the first innings. Certainly been a little bit choppy from the New Zealand team. Now, I look to pick their game up. Oh, thanks, mate. We just do what we can. <laughs> Must admit the uh, quality of production has slipped slightly without the man, the myth, the legend, Samuel Lever. He'll be back for the final. Final, of course, 2 p.m. tomorrow. I'm never going to pretend that I can uh, keep up with Sam. He's, he's got a lot of knowledge in the game and he's very, very animated with his commentary, which is it's amazing and uh, very great to listen to. Very entertaining. No one can keep up with Samuel Lever. I definitely have him covered on the barbecue though. I can confirm that. I've seen Samuel on a barbecue. He tends to get distracted. <laughs> the, the classic Kiwi chicken wings. Burnt on the outside, raw at the bone. Yeah. Watch out for the old salmonella if you're eating at Samuel Lever's house. <laughs> well, I will say that as wife Christy Eva cooks a pretty mean hot cross bun dessert. Hugo Harvey leading off the New Zealand lineup today. First pitch ball for him. And unbelievably, production crew, Patricia Antonovich, still has fans coming up to her as she enters the ground. Still has not made it round here to the commentary box. 
There was a strike there for Hugo, so we're one and one currently. Ball low. 67 mile an hour there. Two balls, one strike for Hugo Harvey. I see there's another Kovic in the building today here now walking across. Wow, and as we commented on earlier, all of the Kovic's in Auckland, they're all related, so it's bound to be one of Mike's family coming along to cheer him on. Hugo with a big foul down third baseline. Obviously I'll also be here to cheer on Mike Sunny. He's probably a slightly more important. He's a member of this New Zealand team. So Hugo here, he's going to be protecting that plate. He's got a full count now. And struck out swinging. One down for New Zealand. Disappointed with that, but I'll tell you what, if you can go full count every time up, you're going to wear down a pitcher, you wear down a pitcher, you'll score some runs late. We have Nikau Waru up to bat now. He's got a... Um, Got what it takes with the bat, so let's see he can produce now when we need it. And looks at strike one. It's been a common thing, a squam pitcher getting ahead at the count. That's a 48 mile an hour curveball. That's also noticed, boy, the the pitcher from Guam here. He's keeping this game moving. He is. He's not mucking around. Just mixing it up, a 48 mile an hour curveball followed by a 66 mile an hour fastball and coming off the bat quite quite close to the hands there so it didn't have much behind it. We have big Shane Scanlon at the plate now. He's been hitting re relatively well this tournament so we'll uh, see how he goes today. He'll be looking to get on bag for Team New Zealand. Man. Outside pitch. It'll be interesting to see how Shane's feeling today. Obviously, he caught that marathon five hours. Can't be easy on a catcher there, Roy, that can it? Five hours in a game. Wow, this is ridiculous. We've got a dog on the outfield. I don't see an owner anywhere coming to get it. Probably out of embarrassment. We have a time, time called here for uh, animal-related stoppage. I think that was a bit rough on poor Shane Scanlon as, as the pitcher was delivering that pitch you saw it, the dog running across the back would have caught the eye of Shane. I think Roy the dog out there is wanting to see a ball out there to chase. Well I've got an idea of where that dog can go to be honest <laughs> and I think tournament director Mark Irwin has the same idea as being Shane's over on there. one ball at the moment and he's hit it down to shortstop Shortstop grabs it, plays out one, and that side away. Not the, not the inning New Zealand would have wanted here, but plenty of this game to go. Weekly over there, he doesn't make mistakes. He's been one of the top players this tournament. Just my apologies here, didn't update our graphics. Of course that was the top of the second for New Zealand and we're going to go into the bottom of the second now. This team from Guam, they pumped up with the early lead. And they're not a side that you really want to be spotting a big lead to. Some pressure on Peter Yee here in the second innings. He's going to have to throw strikes and the field's going to have to make some plays behind him. Oh. 
earlier complaints there from Mike Kovic that the catering here in the commentary box hadn't been up to our regular standards. So yeah, well, I've had uh, this will this will carry on the um, energy of Mike in the in the commentary box. Uh, one point coffee this morning, two cans of Red Bull, and now he's having another coffee supplied by King Coffee Roy. Always, Thank you very much, sir. Always happy to share the coffee supplies. I know that it can wear you down, a full day of commentary here. And it can wear you down if this New Zealand team doesn't start to get rolling, obviously. We are big supporters of this team and we'd like to see them in the final tomorrow. And if they're going to get there, We've got Ethan Santiago up in the box now. We're going to have to see them go to work. And Peter, straight, straight away for Peter. Great start here in the second innings. That's what Peter's going to want now. He's going to be wanting to chuck, it, chuck him right down strikes and get these batters swinging. Peter, of course, pitching out of the wind-up here. A little more comfortable pitching out of the wind-up. Another great pitch there by Peter, fouled off behind home plate. 64 mile an hour there, starting to really get into his work now, Peter. He loves being ahead in the count, it really sets up that off-speed stuff. He's a bit of a magician with his off-speed pitches. So we have one ball and two strikes here. And we have a hit down to Corbin McKinley. He'll make the and play. And we have an out at one. Throw it over to Liam Hay, and that's a great way to start this inning. Yeah, as I said, Peter Yee, if he gets ahead in the count, he can bamboozle teams. Tournament director here, Mark Irwin, obviously saw that with his 19 team that he coaches. As Peter Yee shut them down. Like I was saying before, Peter Yee's had quite a good season on the mound this year and um, seems to be producing out there, which is, uh, is, is very great to see. Bit low there for a ball. So we're back to the top of the lineup over here. Absolutely, we've got this young superstar, number four, weekly. Saw him in that top of the innings, making another nice play at shortstop. With an with a awesome 500 aver average for the tournament so far. And he just tries to hold, but Peter gets the strike with a foul off the bat there. I think that was a strike either way. That was a beautiful pitch right on the corner. Had weekly full. It's a tough thing to do with this batter. Two balls and one strike now, the count. And we have a three and one count now. Peter being very cautious with Weekly. One thing I will say though, he's got speed as well. So if you put him on, he's likely to steal a base. So weekly on yet again. It's proving to um, be a great batter this tournament. Great batter, great glove. All round, that's right, Roy. Good arm. Um... Number three, Alvarez, back in the batter's box, left hander. Early days in this game, but New Zealand's seen about as much of weekly as they want to. Nice strike down there from Peter. A little, yeah. bit of a, a little bit of a surprise look from Alvarez, thinking that that pitch might have been up. He does present a pretty small strike zone. Roy already starting to feel that slight breeze that's picked up here. He's just got to, had to put an extra layer on there. Don't want to get cold. Once you get cold, it's hard to warm back up. So. This coffee's uh, doing quite a good job of keeping me warm at the warm moment there, Roy. Yes, and with only one cup here, I can't have one myself, so... And he goes. Big swing there. Shane will throw down. Oh. Off the ball at two, at two on the throw down. 
for the steal. A bit disappointment because Peter held weekly pretty close. He certainly gave his catcher a chance. Looked like Corbin McKinley coming across. Might have had an opportunity to take that ball and apply the tag. Seems to be a little bit of the case of uh, ball first again there, Roy. Absolutely. You've got to take the ball first. You can't, can't apply a tag unless the ball's in your hand. Peter looking at that little inside move. We have Weekly at two now, though. This is threatening when Weekly's on two. He's got wheels. He's, he's a smart base runner. We have another ball and Weekly advances to three. That ball skips away from Shane Scanlon. I don't think that makes a huge difference to things. I think a base hit would have already scored Weekly. What it does do, however, Peter Yee, who really does like to throw those off-speed pitches, he's just going to be a little cautious now. As you see there, Weekly over at third base. A one ball and two strike count. Peter will be wanting to get this one here for a strikeout. Shane takes his position there again. Peter comes set. And that's back up the right middle. Through the middle, over second base, brings in Weekly. You see Weekly just jogging on in. And we have Alvarez at one now. Oh, sorry, no. What's our score there? We, we have that run making it five. Five zero to Guam. Of course it is. Not what New Zealand would be wanting right now. Them applying to the initial four runs in the first inning. So just look behind me here. Coaching crew of New Zealand, Brains Trust. They've got the bullpen working now. They can't let this go too long. Peter blows that one past the Costa. One and one. Of course, there's no prizes for second in this game. Winner goes on to play career in the final. And he will go. Easily advances to two. He got a read on Peter there, and he actually took off while Peter was looking over at him. Two balls on Acosta now. Oh, sorry. Two balls, one strike. Just slightly delayed on the old uh, updates here. I'm going to keep Mike uh, on his toes today. Big swing at that. It's the end of the bat. We have two and two here. Look over, I can see pitching coach for New Zealand, Connor Perry. He's looking frustrated. He is stalking backwards and forwards just outside the dugout. This is not how he drew this game up. Inside move, Guam team. Commenting on the fact that they were not at all fooled by that. Costa Again, just digs the in the plate. The enthusiasm and the energy in that dugout of Guam, that, that composure it seems there, Roy. Yeah. Yeah. Big swing there, dropped by Shane, but he's going to throw him out at no, he's not. the top of Liam Hay. He has we emailed that into now. right field. That's going to make it 6 0 now. And he's going to 3. And easily to 3. So what we've just seen is a strikeout that has scored a run Thinking we want and the player who was struck out has ended up on third base. Looks like we would need to take a bit of a time here. New Zealand coach here out saying that he caught that. He's going to check with the other umpires. This could be a massive moment in this game. Now, with what's going on here, Roy, what, what, what are we talking? Uh, that he's meant to have 
load and stop before he carries on at this next next bag or is it no 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 what we're talking about here mike is if the catcher obviously catches that strike three the bat is out immediately he wouldn't have needed to throw it down sure. to one but that's not what happened there no he did not catch it. i think we could see that from our spot here a bit of desperation really from the new zealand coach and of course that run will score. There'll be a little chance to sort of slow it down a little bit though there, which is, you know, I think New Zealand are, just need to just have a little reset and think about what's going on here because uh, something needs to be done. And we've driven out to two here and bobbled at two. Is he going to get... He gets the play at one, but Got the play at one. runner in, making it 7-0. We see, we see Acosta there, obviously struck out and still due to that throwing error has safely made it home I'm not really wanting to mention this Roy but um, at what stage does the mercy laws come in here <laughs> oh, I wish you weren't mentioning it this early as well so obviously in Little League mercy does come into play and there's a nice stroke by Peter and the mercy rule Mike is that if a team is leading by 15 runs after four innings or 10 runs after five or more innings, then the umpires will call the game, they will apply the mercy rule and the game will be over. Thank you very much for that coffee, sir. That was brilliant. So we have Park in the batter's box, left-handed batter, and he is one strike on him. be two strikes there. Big, big swing, swing there. Big swing from Parks but no dice. Cannot make contact. So, oh, so we actually have one ball two strikes. And we had a nice flat piece out to dropped in right field there. Micah Hargrave out there, come flying in, look to make the play. I think he had an opportunity to, to make that catch, but just... I think these New Zealand boys need to get that ball sticking in that glove right now. Ball skipped out. I'm not sure whether that landed just short or it skipped out of the glove. I'm trying to get an indication from TP. TP saying it actually fell just short of him. He's also calling that that outfield is two steps too deep so runner goes Shane go. with the cannon and you better believe one. it nice Shane here we go New Zealand coming into bat now but that brings the ball game to 7 zip to Guam coming into the third innings now absolutely not the start New Zealand wanted but hey again it's baseball anything can happen So this New Zealand team, it's got to be playing on them a little bit here. I, I believe that seven runs in the first two innings here and I think that makes it 22 runs they've conceded in their last four innings of baseball. And they're a better team than that, Mike. They definitely are. It just doesn't seem to be be able to be piecing together the puzzle today. Guam looking, looking happy as they take the field. Alvarez on the mound. We have uh, Ben Bon Giovanni coming up to bat first for New Zealand. Ben will be looking to give a spark for the New Zealand boys with uh, as leadoff batter in this inning. There's a strike for the first pitch there, looking by Ben. One 
One and one. Ben puts it out to centre field and it's a textbook catch out there by a centre fielder. One down. We have uh, 43 Micah Hargraves up to bat. Be wanting to put this ball in play here. Get us on, on bag. Ball high for the first pitch there by Acosta. We have a strike there, swinging. Mike is so far this tournament at a batting of 500 average. Ball high there. We have a two ball, one strike count here now. Micah hits it down, first base, foul ball. Struck out swinging there. We have two down now for New Zealand. Uh, it's not what the boys would be wanting there. First two batters going out. We have uh, Corbin McKinley up to bat now. Strike called there. Not sure. My angle's quite right here, but marginal there for me. That was the same pitch. Two strikes on Corbin. Well, if it's called a strike the first time and it's the same yep. pitch, it'll be called a strike the second time. That's all we ask. Certainly. Acosta's got a big smile on his face while he's pitching out there today. Might be a bit of a giveaway there. I think he... Likes it when the catcher calls a curveball. We have two strikes on Corbin here. Corbin, of course, the leadoff hitter for the New Zealand team. All and low there. Even with two out, they've shown an ability to get the bats going and score some runs, and we really need to see it from them here. Puts it down to shortstop here. Safe at first. Way to run that bag there, Corbin. He has made the base, and now we've got Liam Hay up to bat. Hopefully, Liam will be hoping to um, push his player around, if not bring him all the way around, Roy. Interesting there. Very close call. Weekly at shortstop. Showing off his strong arm, but Corbin, his wheels just got him there. Again, that um, slight sort of pump on the ball there may have been the difference between the out and the safe call there. All right, Michael, sometimes that can just be just to make sure you've got a good grip on it. Worst thing you can do is throw the ball away. We saw that in the last innings when catcher Shane Scanlon over through first base, run scored, player ended up on third, so taking a bit of time can be a smart play. Liam Hay here with a Ball one, down. Big cut there from Liam, but fouls it away. A lot of energy in the New Zealand camp there to go get the foul ball. Like to see that energy transferred out onto the, the field. Diamond, yeah. You better believe it. I see Corbin now getting a lead. 
Liam Hay with a big hit out to centre. Ripped that one to centre, but the centre fielder's parking himself underneath it. And takes it easily. Makes a catch. Liam just needed to flatten that out a little bit, and that could have been baseball burger time, but instead it's just an easy fly ball to centre field. And I've been talking to his old man TP there about the, the size of this burger with the ball-shaped meat patty, the baseball, big baseball burger. I did wonder if you'd actually thought about it, clearly. Stayed up at night thinking about what Rolled he's going to do. flour so it looks like a baseball. Red onion stitching on the meat patty. Probably gives you a bit of an indication on how the New Zealand team's going for us to be focused more on that. And we're seeing a pitching change here for New Zealand. Masai Turo. I'll tell you what, if he's throwing strikes, he can be unhittable. The biggest question with this boy on the mound is 44 Magnum. Is he throwing strikes today? New Zealand team will certainly hope so. intimidated by anything you hear them in their dugout. They're excited to face this pitching. A little more speed on the ball. Sometimes you can hit it further. There's two more pitches left in his warm up. You'll probably hear a little bit of the EO for this New Zealand team. Tara, a little bit of nerves. Her son takes a mound. If I don't hear her calling out a few times, then I'm going to be really worried about the energy from this New Zealand team. Fastball there, 71 mile an hour. Tara getting into it, firing up the team. So as I said, it's not the way the New Zealand team would have drawn it up. Peter Yee only lasting two innings, giving up seven runs. Not all of it his fault. When a player ends up on third base from the strikeout, it's hard to blame the pitcher. But nevertheless, changes had to be made. And we see Messiah just struggling to find the zone early. Two balls. Tomanglo in the box there. Great pitch there by Messiah. With a swinging foul there. 75 mile an hour that fastball. Right up there with the quickest pitches so far in this tournament. Ty Manglo, he's on a 429 average for the tournament so far, so he's been hitting. Great pitch there by Messiah. 76 mile an hour on the outside corner and you don't like that as a batter. the dirt there. In the batter's circle we have uh, Trace Tacheron coming up. He's a 0 and 1 for today. It's always got to be a little bit intimidating when you've got someone like uh, Messiah up on the mound and you're facing him as a batter. He's a substantial human being. One of many in this New Zealand team, over six feet tall. And uh, I've known him for a few years now and he keeps seeming to keep, keep getting taller. Well that said though, these Guam players not intimidated. We see a walk taken there. Trace that bat now. Left fielder. In the dirt again. 
Runner stays at one. Bottom of the third. Still seven and oh. The way of Guam. Two balls on the batter at the moment. Foul ball there. A little bunt that just popped into the field and come out only about six foot off home plate. Great pitch there, change of speed there, dropping right in the meat of the plate. It's a beautiful pitch you just missed there, Roy. I didn't miss it, I was just over talking to our nice. production crew. Nice change up there and it just dropped right dead centre meat of the strike zone there. Off attempt there. That was pretty close. That yeah. Pick off. yeah. The Messiah, as we talked about the other day when he pitched, he's got a few different moves. Can be deceptive, especially when they're the runner on second count. base. That was Ooh. another great pitch there by Messiah, striking out number seven. Closer on. KG says to the batter, can I help you sir? And he says, no thanks, just looking. <laughs> and he's rung up. Do we have Darren? Love it. Tao Tao up to bat now. Love to see KG pulling out the chainsaw there. Letting that batter know. I wouldn't one for today as well. Nice blocking there by Shane. Runner will go. Way off with the throw there. But the runner won't advance from second. It's not the first time we've seen Shane airmail one today, and I just wonder if that five hours of catching yesterday is really having an effect as he tries to get his legs under him to make those well, throws. Also talking about the, the want. Sometimes when you want things so much, it's it's a very hard hard to, to make things happen. It's That's a great call, Mike. It's, you see fastball down the middle, 75 miles an hour. Those pitches are coming in there quite nicely there from Messiah to Huro today. Another great pitch there by Messiah, got him swinging. Just working, mid 70s, 74 that one. Better unable to catch up with it. This one, one ball, two strike count here. This opens up the repertoire for Messiah. I'd be expecting to see one of his Sliders that he uses to great effect. Maybe even a curveball. Goes the slider out to second. Got Ben throwing him out at one. I like to see that. Probably just hanging in the middle of the plate a little bit too much, but so we have a two outs. We have a runner at three. Number eight up to bat. That is Santiago. Santiago. We see that runner over there at third, chomping at the bit, wanting to get home. If I'm and correct, another Santiago run. Santiago had some amazing plays from third base yesterday. Yeah, he's very solid to start the game. Got off speed pitch there, coming in for a ball. He's still got that balaclava around the neck. Yesterday, of course, over at third base, he had that drawn right up over his face. Some of these Guam boys probably been feeling that real nippy New Zealand breeze there. Absolutely, he's looking to protect himself from that wind. Fastball there. 73 as Messiah just looks to work into the innings. Work into this outing. Two outs here. Fastball up. Yes. 
sitting nicely around 73, 74. If it, if it pitch up at 75. That was a great pitch there by Messiah. Absolutely, better taking all the way. Messiah just took a little bit off it. Well, they got to remember we got 73 mile an hour in in the batter's circle coming up to bat next. We are back to the weekly up next to bat. Foul, foul ball. ball. Rung the bell there of Shane Scanlon, right off the mask. Right, Shane. Sees New Zealand coach out there, just bringing a couple of balls over to Cagey. Cagey will walk it out to the pitcher. This is all part of the game of baseball. Is they're just giving that catcher a little bit of time to recover. On a three ball, one strike count. Shane Scanlon, the big San unit. Diego. Be desperate to see Messiah finish this one off. And Great that's what he does. There. Oh my. Side away. It's what New Zealand needed there. 77 mile an hour. Messiah reared back. Ripped that one in there and gave KG the opportunity to pull the chainsaw out one more time. To no mercy, just rung him up. Quite ideal for New Zealand at the moment, not letting any runs in on that inning. Well, it's more than ideal, it's actually what has to happen. You know, see, we, we are uh, getting through this game quite uh, at a nice time frame at the moment. I'm not sure New Zealand will want that to be going so quickly at the moment, but it is moving along into the fourth. Absolutely, so we'll go on to the fourth here, I believe. Uh, we have TJ Amosa coming up to bat first. Water. They, they've got uh, more water over there. Did they not bring them over? Hey yo. Tara just commented on the fact that the water had not been brought over. Unfortunately, um, well, I could make a phone call. My phone has been used to make sure we bring these pitches to you. Amosa with a 500 average for this tournament so far. He's been um, using the bat really nicely this tournament. I think Tara's just gone over to the tournament director and said, come on, pal. Hydrate our players. We're the home team. We're the home team. We're supposed to have an advantage here. Although, when we talk about advantage, all teams here getting water. Most of be looking to spark the New Zealand lineup here. Water supplied, of course, through Pure NZ. Malcolm Vito and the team there. They know how important hydration is. Oh my! Bangs one up. It's high. The wind will get it. But the centre field. under centre field. No he problem. He hasn't missed a thing today. Much like that earlier hit from Liam Hay, just got under it a little bit, he just needs to flatten that out a touch. It's one down for New Zealand, we have um, up to bat now Messiah Tuhorot, and let's see if he can use the bat as good as that pitching was. He bangs one. Out third for foul ball. One strike. Wind starts to pick up. I'm just noticing that camera. Time is called. Ball on the field. No, it was more that the left fielder was still in foul territory, having gone and picked that ball up. So obviously, One um, strike on Messiah here, and he's hit it big out to centre. Is it going to go? Again, centre field, comfortably taking that catch. He has a glove that is not letting up. I think uh, Messiah might be regretting the bat flip that he did on that one after hitting it. It's uh, never fun realising you've just bat flipped on an easy fly ball to centre field. And we have a swinging strike one for Harvey. Two down now for New Zealand. 
this in might the fourth be, inning. Might be just what we need after two balls crunch to centre field. Hugo more likely to just place one into a gap. The thing New Zealand need to know here now is uh, they want to get some runs back here because in the fourth innings here we're talking about that mercy law. If Bam get a few more runs in, down a third for Harvey. Big throw and another nice tidy play for Guam. One, two, three. New Zealand will feel positive that they're making connection, but this is where Guam I think will be looking to put put a few more runs in here and uh, be looking for that uh, mercy law here, Roy. <laughs> I think that's the last thing they're thinking about. They're just keeping about thinking about keeping the pressure on. Of course, four innings. They'd need eight runs to come up with the mercy. Stranger things have happened, but Mike, if you're calling for that. We, I'm not calling for that <laughs> at all, but you've got to think that they're thinking we're, we've got a lot of runs in here. We'll get a, a number more in. It can really, really affect things here. You just can't take away from the Guam team at the moment. They're smooth. Um, collective, making all the plays, not making any errors. Indeed, they're good operators. Certainly the team to beat at this stage of this tournament. I think we called the win yesterday um, before the game against Korea there. Absolutely, even, both of us. Even it didn't go seven. Both of us picked that one. I had a confident lead when the game got called in the sixth. We thought that this Guam team looked good. We thought they looked sharp. We thought that they looked like the team to beat, and so it proved. And here we go. We've got Weekly leading off this innings for Guam. New Zealand finding this Guam team's giving them all they can handle at the moment. Messiah to Porto here. He'll be looking to um, quickly get these batters out of here. Strike for the first pitch down there, Messiah. Beautiful pitch. One strike on weekly. Off speed there. The ball, one and one. Weekly, nothing has stopped this kid all tournament. Another nice strike there by Messiah Tuhora. 75 mile an hour on the outside corner. That's tough for Weekly. And he'll just tip his cap to the pitcher there and say, I'm thinking you're going to give me one. We have one ball, two strikes here. It'll be two and two. Messiah looking to deceive him a little, dropping down a little bit sidearm, 76 mile an hour, but. This is a kid that you're going to struggle to fool. The consistency on that pace by Messiah there. That was a great pitch. Ooh. That is a hard call on Messiah there. KG took a, that two little like steps. a classic Roy Antinovich uh, pitch there. Two little steps backwards. That's normally what he does before ripping out that chainsaw and just giving it to the batter. Got a full count here. Weekly will be um, knowing he's got to do something here. He takes the walk. That pitch was close. Not close enough. So we have Alvarez up to bat now. You hear there in the background, New Zealand executive officer just saying, get him. What she's meaning is, if that runner takes off from first, you throw him out. Be intriguing to see here. What the approach is, Shane definitely nothing to lose having a crack. Alvarez punching it out to centre, TJ under it, fumble there. He can throw him out at second. Two. Out at two. Oh no, no safe. I think what you'll find there is second baseman didn't have his foot on the bag. It's a force play. If his foot had been on the bag, that was definitely an out. 
you tell me at home, you probably had as good a view as I this did. Is, this is the little things that uh, New Zealand need to piece together to get these outs because it's proving to let Guam keep attacking on those runs. The runner's gone from two, he's safely at three. And just a, another little mental lapse there is Messiah actually pitching out of the wind up there with runners on first and second. So we saw a double error really in that last play. We saw TJ Amosa dropping the ball in centre field. And then we saw Ben Bongiovanni taking the throw, not standing on the bag, and just not quite getting back to the bag in time. Everybody safe. Acosta in the batting box. Runners on the corners. Opportunity to score here. Runner goes. Zero out. We got. Back to three, he's safe there, and runners at two now. I'm questioning these first and third calls from the New Zealand team. They obviously called that as a throw down to third, but Nico Wadu, down the line a bit, never never gave his catcher a chance. We have a big lead here, number two. High ball there. Score still seven, zip, to Guam. Great pitch there by Messiah. Really Dropping needed that. Zone. 62 mile an hour. Careful, just looping it in there. Costa's got a 636 average for this tournament. Another great pitch. One of one of the better tournament averages I've seen uh, so far come up on these sheets. So, well, we've seen it. We've seen it as we've sat here. We've seen it rip balls into left field. Oh, hit by pitch. That's going to give them loaded bases. Messiah got, himself back, in, got himself back in the count. Had so, an opportunity to put him away and then comes inside and hits him. Unfortunate situation to be in here with zero out. Runners on all bags, loaded bags. New Zealand pitching coach, Connor Perry, makes his way out there. See him step up onto the mound. He's not a small lad. Knows a little bit about pitching the big left-hander. Might be a different story getting out of this innings if Connor Perry was allowed to take the mound, rip down those 90 mile an hour fastballs. Need to get these outs now, New Zealand. Do the work and get the outs. Leon Guerrero in the batter's box, left hand batter. Set another way there, Mike, do the mahi get the treats? That's it. Looking pretty safe for these burgers at the moment there too, Roy. Yes, the wind picking up a little. We have a one and one count now on Leon Guerrero. Zealand dugout breaking into song, hoping that little rendition of Two Tita Minor Iwi will lift the team. An old speed pitch there by Messiah. Bringing another strike there, a the foul ball. On deck batter says, I'm not interested in picking up that ball. Now he gets to, into action, goes and gets the ball. Young Parks, Ray Ray as his teammates call him. That ball Down ripped up the middle. middle. There. One run in there. That makes eight. We have two, so that's a nine run lead now. Runners at one and two. Zero out. I know these New Zealand coaches are trying to stay positive. But Mike, this lead is getting pretty big. Ray Sean Parks up to bat, left handed batter. 9-0. Can you see a comeback? I would really like to see that. That would make for a great game here. I didn't ask what you'd like to see. What do you think is going to happen I'm here? not going to comment there, Roy. 
might have a few people that uh, will not like what I'm about to say. I'm assuming that your answer is the same as mine there, as this New Zealand team is looking, looking down, looking a little defeated. We always want to right? be positive in, in what we say, so we, all we can hope is uh, New Zealand have a little talk and think about what's going on here. And We're only in the fourth innings. So there, through is, the game. there is time, but you got to want it. Ray Sean Parks here, he's got one ball, two strikes on him. A lot of speed pitch there. It'll be two and two. Still runners on one and two. Zero down. Great pitch, but not quite in the zone. And he's loaded walked, bags. the base is loaded. We have Trace. Sure enough, Tidia Thompson is going to come walking out here, have a talk to his pitcher. Javier Taimanglo on the next batter at the plate with the 429 average for this tournament. New Zealand team know that if this game hasn't gotten away from them already, a base hit here and it'd definitely be looking a bit nasty as it looks like that's it from Messiah. Not sure what you're seeing here Mike but I'm thinking they might be going to Ben Bon Giovanni. It's been an been an interesting call to me that Ben wasn't the starting pitcher of this game. He's been one of the top pitchers here in the Auckland competition. I know he has been dealing with a little bit of an arm injury. Looks like the defensive change will be Messiah probably going out to left field. She'll pull Hugo Harvey in second base and then of course Ben Bon Giovanni who was at second come onto the mound a lot of pressure on him here bases loaded I think we got no one out Mike no outs oh my Nine word zip and still Graham have runners on one and two zero down bringing in the new pitcher Ben Bon Giovanni M3, sorry. Loaded bags. Thank you, TP, correcting me there. So I'm, I'm uh, it's getting a little bit. Uh, it's been a long day. Here. Yeah, ben just M3. thrown 67s in this warm up. He's normally got a little more in the tank than that, but as I mentioned, he's been battling a bit of an arm injury, which is probably why he wasn't seen as starting pitcher for this game. Another 67 there. It's New Zealand team, they have to lay it all on the line here. Graham coach just over checking the pitch count for his pitcher. I think at 45, I don't think he should I don't think he should be worrying now. I think he's going to be running him right to 95. He's been doing a great job shutting out the New Zealand team so far. So I think you're right there, Roy. We'd keep him on and um, use him up, right? Well, he's not going to be able to pitch again this tournament. So his limit yeah. is 95. He'll be using that until, until it can. Ball there for Ben. 70 mile an hour now, just that little bit of extra adrenaline as he gets up there with a batter in the box. Just waiting for my uh, to update here. That ball yeah, ripped to, to third, comes home. Lead runner taken out there for the first out of the inning. So, interesting there Shane. I think he was just a little unsure whether or not his foot was on the plate, so he did a little bit of a tap dance back there rather than looking to just take that and then rip that throw down to first looking for a double play. And a 
I've got to say, getting one was the important thing. Would have been nice for two. Trace Taser on. In the batter's box, we've got two balls on him now. That was a great pitch there by Ben. Ben Bon Giovanni sitting at 71 mile an hour now. Fast ball on the outside corner. Two and one. Loaded bags. Another strike there. I see the better in the box. He'll be frustrated swinging two, over that one. Two and two count now. Loaded bags, one down. He's still going to be really wanting to do something here. And behind the batter. Interesting there. A fair few times in the majors there I've seen the um, batters go to the mound for things like that. Wow, the control of those pitches pitch was. Did he go? Did he go? Did he oh. Go? It's struck out swinging. That's two down. 71 mile an hour. A little bit of experience there. That's what New Zealand needed there. To New Zealand catcher saying, yes, he did. Called down to the first base umpire. And the first base umpire rang him up. Rain Rios coming in. Get on, Benny. Get on, Benny. Come on now. Pitch hitter into the game. Number 55. Rain Rios. With two out. He'll be looking to extend that lead here. From nine. Great pitch there by Ben. 72 mile an hour. Ben really warming up into his work here. The leads are massive here. It's a big lead down there at third base. You're quite third right. This is uh, not far off touching home plate here. Top foul. Number 11 over there, is he looking to Jackie Robinson this, you reckon? Is he going to look to steal home? I don't think so, Mike, but, no, but I've seen crazier things happen. Game there, I believe. Had his back turned on everything. and Don't see a much bigger lead than that, Roy, down third. Oh, ho, ho. KG backs up, thinks about it, thinks about it. No, out of the zone, just low. Again, we see this player on third taking two this two, big lead. Two and two count here. And oh, he's hit him. by pitch, and that brings in another runner. That makes it 10 now. We're in the double digits here, Roy. And one thing this does mean is that when we go into the top of the fifth, New Zealand will, get, will have to score to keep this game alive. I did not see this happening at all. When I woke up this morning. Oh, that is safe at home. We have a bit of arguments going on here between the Blues and. Oh, I think someone's getting sent here. The question is. The question is, had Ben Bon Giovanni engaged the rubber up on the mound? And the player broke for home. If he hadn't engaged the rubber, of course he can do whatever he wants. Oh, he's called him safe here at home. He absolutely has, and I think he's called it based on Ben taking a little shuffle step to throw that home. If he had just essentially pitched the ball, New Zealand coach there may be very lucky to still be in the ballpark. He got very close to being thrown there, I believe. That ball's ripped foul. I think the um, composure of uh, New Zealand is just getting a little bit lost in the politics here, isn't it? It's not politics, Mike, it's baseball. Lost in the baseball. Another ball here. Of course. I think, guys. 
And of course, the situation now, 11 runs up. New Zealand's going to have a lot of pressure on them. Still on two down. Low pitch there. They're going to have to score two runs when we go to the top of the fifth just to keep this game alive. Santiago, again, talking about his third base uh, skills. He's been playing like a little demon out there. These Guam boys now very, very confident. High pitch there. He's going to make it three and two. Uh, three and one, sorry. Two down, 11 zip. Loaded, oh, runners on two and three. Yes, That's another that, walk. Well, that earlier balk called has been looked to come home to get the runner this out. This is not a good sign here, Roy. We've got loaded bags and we've got Weekly up to bat now. Number four, Weekly. He's been, he's one and one for today. As a, look as a look around this crowd, I see a few heads and hands. One and one will be because he had a walk, Mike. Sure. Only one counting at bat, and he got a hit with it. This is the wrong guy for this situation. Very much so, Roy, not by watching uh, some of his games, this um, thing going into it. If they make the final, he'll be one of the ones looking at uh, MVP status. I think that's a great call. There's a pitch by Ben. That's what he needed. Get back in that zone. So Weekly again, he's uh, 500 average. He's looking at... One and one. Seem to be a long inning here in the grand scheme of this game so far, Roy. Way longer than we wanted. Ben Bon Giovanni put in a really tough spot in this game. But is this game going to go the seven today, Roy? <laughs> There's a high fight foul ball there behind home plate. Pop foul, and I'll tell you what, if I was a betting man, 71 mile an hour fastball there, foul away. But if I was a betting man, obviously I'm not. We don't promote betting. But I would say that this game is going to be over very soon. There's a bit. Peace out into second base. You go Harvey out Collect there. Collects that. Bring him in. That was a critical play from Hugo. Question is, does it keep New Zealand in this game? Well, they need to get these bats firing now or they're in very big trouble now, Roy. I think I'm correct that we have now a score of 11 to Guam. New Zealand yet to score. Hear the New Zealand team in the background there firing up. So he's possibly left it a little bit late. When I woke up this morning, I didn't expect. The Indonesian team to show more fight than the home team here from New Zealand, but that's the way it's played out. Alvarez continues with his big smile up on the mound. There's a 
look around at the dejected fans of this New Zealand team. Feeling as though this could be it for their team. But you never know, baseball's a funny game. They can get a couple of runs across here just to extend the game. Good to get. One probably think that the game's over. New Zealand will be looking to prove them wrong. Mikael Wadu up to bat. Can we look at a hit here? TK. He's running now on this inning. TK to his teammates and he we does. Two runs we need in the does have, a, does have a big bat. We do need two runs. It's a high ball, yeah, straight off the bat. So TK knows he's got to get on base here. And he'll get there any way he can. There we go. Beautiful hitting. Out to left now. Yeah, yeah. base there. That's what New Zealand needs here. Mikel, lead off batter on first base now. This is where things can turn around for the New Zealand boys. They really need to keep that up. Just a little bit of a different approach from him there. You've seen a couple of the boys that are outfield playing deep against these big batters and they've tried to hit it over them. Not TK. He's a smart batter. <coughs> no, all he needs to do is just... Nice right, spot out there where he put it. Line that point. ball over the third baseman. It'll be a base hit all day. Shane Scanlon, he'll be looking to bring his runner around now. We've got a runner on for TK. Your special pinch runner use, and I find that a little bit interesting because the lead... I believe that's because uh, Wadu is going to be pitching. Well, the lead runner doesn't really matter, to be honest. In the shape. It's Shane Scanlon. Represents the key run for New Zealand to extend this game. You see Blake Percy over there. He's ready to go. Wide pitch there. Shane taking the ball. New Zealand team starting to amp up. Another pickoff attempt. Shane looking nice and composed in there. I know he'll be feeling that pressure though there, Roy, won't he? He does have a lot of pressure on his shoulders here after catching a marathon five-hour game yesterday. And, and he's, he's put that one down him. third, and that's going to go foul, unfortunately. Wow, he ripped that ball. But you've got that absolutely right. That ball is always hooking foul. As good as it looked. Shane will know, though, that he's got... He can, he's seen that now. As good as it looked, all we get from that is a long, loud strike. Alvarez shaking off his catcher a couple of times. How many pitches has he got in the bag to shake that many times? That was a great pitch there. Strike two now on Shane. Got to think that outside pitch. Shane should just be looking to go opposite field with that. Get himself on base. That wind's slightly picking up now, Roy. So looking safe again for those burgers. Let's see if that affects Alvarez on the mound. May give him a couple of extra miles in that pitching. It feels like it's coming from directly behind him almost. Yes, although no pitcher likes being up there on the mound in these gusty conditions. Might explain that loose pitch there. Shane ducking out of the way of it. Oh, oh wow. This is why they wear the elbow guards there. That would have been a very painful hit by pitch without that. Sound of that elbow guard. Runners on one and two now. This is where New Zealand want to be making stuff happen here. Be intriguing to watch. New Zealand coach down there. What's he thinking? 
Is he thinking that we just need to advance these runners? Of course, both of these runners on base have to come home for New Zealand to extend this game. If they extend the game, there's no telling what could happen. And there's the answer. I, I possibly would have been thinking about laying down a bunt. 58 mile an hour off-speed pitch. Tangaroa King using his speed out there, picking the ball up. He's a nice kid, that Tangaroa King. Of course, he knows what's on the line here. I've been privileged enough to have him in uh, teams that I've uh, coached before, and um, he's a great, great young player, old Tangaroa. So he was out at Easley, South Carolina last year, representing New Zealand team, World Series. He'd love to go back. There's a ball high in there. A loopy off-speed pitch. Guam team celebrating it based on where the catcher caught it, but it's not where the catcher catches it. It's where it goes past the batter, and that was definitely up. That's a strikeout for Ben Bongiovanni there. That is one out. That's uh. Coming up to bat number three, Tangaroa King. Really wasted opportunity there. You can't be looking at strike three. We just hear now. Pinch hitter being announced, Tangaroa King. Three for 43. being struck out looking that's a nice strike down the middle there 66 mile an hour outside half of the plate right at the knees beautiful pitch Tangaroa King will be looking for contact here Roy that curveball that he's throwing in there 14 mile an hour slow 52 miles an hour Tangaroa King says nah uh -uh. One of the only representatives from the uh, Waitakere Bears. Another strike on Tangaroa there. Here yeah, the New Zealand coaching crew, that's up, KG that's up. They weren't happy at all about that strike being called. We're one down, runners on one and two. Just a reminder, both of, these, both of these runners have to score. Whoa, fall on the helmet. Yeah, will be a walk, loading the bags up for Corbin McKinley coming up to bat. Tangaroa looked to duck out of the way, but he ended up ducking right into it. Hey, it's going to take more than that to hurt this big unit, and he just bat Corbin, flips. Corbin coming up to bat here. He's a he's a good solid base hitter. Got a time called here. Giving the little the pitcher a bit of a reset here from uh, Guam. So earlier on, I was looking at it, thinking that uh, this camera here was wobbling a bit with the wind. It's actually the New Zealand team climbing on the fence, getting them behind their players. They know this is an opportunity for them to extend this game, and if you extend the game, anything can happen. This is really what they need now: is to make sure this game isn't over here and carry us on. This is VIP. Yeah. Vin Scully, Messiah there walking in behind us. He's hoping that he can get to bat this innings. So, like I said before, Corbin McKinley is a, is a proven great little base hitter. We need to get him on here. We'll be wanting to score here. That'll be called a strike on him. The big bit here is these runners. They've all got to be aware. Of course, after that strikeout earlier in the inning, to double play here would end the game. He's in the hot seat here now. He needs. Uh, he's got two strikes on him. One out. Loaded bases. New Zealand will be really wanting something to happen here. Alvarez shakes him off. Shakes him, him, off, him off. Shakes him off again. In the nod. And that's down. Low fastball there. 
You see Shane Scanlon over there at second base. He knows base hit is going to be on him. He's got to get home. If he gets home, then this game carries on. Out at two. Out at two, but we brought one runner in, so we are now on the board. So you notice there, I lost, lost my ability to talk for a second as I looked to see if it was going to be a double play ending the game. Corbin's a little little quick follow that he got down there pretty quickly. He definitely beat it down the line. And we got Mr. Leon and Hay up to bat now. This could change the game here if he can get a bit of bat to ball. Captain of the New Zealand team, if he can come up with a hit, the game continues. First and third situation. If I'm Guam. Anxiously over here to the left. If I'm Guam, I just look to throw the runner out if he goes. Pitcher steps off. Corbin backs it up. This is a huge moment. New Zealand really need this now. Outside. Outside, maybe a little low. Liam known for having a great eye. Time call. The runners on the corners for New Zealand. Liam Hay, he'll be looking to punch this one out there in a safe spot. He's played it down three. And he'll make the throw. And that is side away. I believe that 11 is. 1. I believe that should be full game. Mercy Law coming into play, and this is going to be the quickest game of the tournament, I believe. KG checks. We see the Guam team gathering. It is game, guys. Mercy Law comes into effect there. Top of the fifth. 10 run lead to Guam. And there it is, it's been announced. So we have a final now. That is going to be Korea Guam playing in the final tomorrow. New Zealand playing Indonesia for three and four. Guam team, you uh, hear the fire. emotion. So what do you reckon, Roy, for the, what's, what's your view on the final here now being Korea, Guam? Well, all I can say is get down here to Follett Field, 2 o'clock tomorrow, and you'll get to see, along with the rest of us, obviously this home team, New Zealand, they'll be incredibly disappointed about how this has gone. But that's baseball. I'm going to make a little call on this final, and I've seen all the teams playing here this weekend, and I'm looking at Guam for the victory of this tournament now. Yeah, there you go, you heard that from Mike. Mike, thank you for your time here and I think you, uh, I think with that 11-1, five innings, Mercy in a semi-final, it's not what the home team wanted. You see Guam there just celebrating. We're going to sign out here from Follett Field and we'll see you tomorrow. Third and fourth playoff, that'll be the New Zealand team, 10 a.m. and they're going to take on Indonesia and after that It'll be on to the final. Guam versus Korea, winner of that, off to the World Series. Thank you and goodbye.